Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, and uh, my setup is a little different today, as you can see. Um, I was trying to figure out how I could actually uh, set this up, <laughs> so so things are going to look a little bit different. I wanted to actually sort of walk you through the process of how I might set up my own still life, because you know I do a lot of still life. I do a lot of glass and and. Um, um, China and things like that and so I wanted to uh, share with you sort of the thought process that I go through and the steps that I take in order to uh, create uh, an effective reference picture because without without great lighting in your uh, original reference picture you're gonna have a mediocre painting out of it and you spend such a long time painting something you don't want to end up with a mediocre painting so, um, <clears throat> you can see in the upper left corner that I have um, basically a picture of my tabletop. I've got uh, this uh, uh, lens here on the left. Let me just see if this is working here. Yes, it is. Okay, so this is, this is actually a light. I can turn it on and off. And you can see it really <laughs> changes things a lot. There's a bit of a delay, I think. Um, as as the uh, my main camera uh, makes the adjustments but I wanted you to see the whole surface because I wanted to see I wanted you to see what I do with the light what I do with the background what I do uh, with the subject itself so I'm going to first of all start off with um, uh, just talking about you know when you're photographing it because <clears throat> if I were to take this let me just take my camera here. This is, let me move this out of the way for a moment. So if I were to take my camera, let's go over to my camera here, and I were to take a photograph of this, um, just, you know, put it on photo and take a photograph of this, um, I would end up with um, something not too bad. Now, if I if I pull away, I'm off screen now, but if I pull away and I photograph it from more of a distance, there's going to be less distortion. Um, I have to move something out of the way here for a second. Okay, so if, if I were to pull away and take the same photo, um, let me just show you what those two look like. Okay, so I've got, um, here, I'll do it on this camera here. Sorry, I'm, I'm adjusting things here, but it's a little awkward. Okay, so that's the last one I took, and here's the one I took up close. Now, I want you to look at the saucer, all right? Do you see the saucer? I can see the how the saucer scoops up, right? I can see the front of it here. But when I'm zoomed in, when I'm right on top of it, I'm losing that. So consider stepping back and zooming in rather than taking it up close. Look how look how gigantic the egg looks in the first picture too. It looks like it's like super, super close. So when you take a picture, you know, you want to fill the frame and you take the picture uh, just with the normal setting, uh, you can get this sort of distortion and that that's a telltale sign when you've painted the um, the reference. That's a telltale sign that the um, it was done from a reference photo and that it was um, really up close because there's that that extreme distortion. So I hope you're seeing the difference there. Uh, it's it's especially noticeable in the saucer. All right, see see the saucer here, and then the saucer here. So less distortion, the egg doesn't look as huge, and so on. All right, so that's the first little bit of advice that I would uh, give you. Also, on your phone, you could, let me go back to my camera mode here. All right, so go to, back to my camera, and I'm going to touch the screen, <laughs> if I can get my hand through all this camera stuff, and I touch the screen, and you see that little sign? If I slide that up or down, I can lighten or darken before I actually hit the button, right? So I can 
tap it anywhere on the screen where I want to get the correct exposure and lighting. It'll take a reading from that spot and so on. So you don't have to just sort of point and shoot. You could actually have a little bit of control there with the exposure right off the bat. Um, okay, so let's move the camera out of the way here for a second, or my phone. <clears throat> now I'm going to use my um, um, computer camera here, or my uh, webcam here for this, just to show this. Uh, in the upper left corner, you can see my whole workspace. <clears throat> Pardon me. And you can see you can see the shadows. I have all the lights in the room off. I have the window open or the curtain open just slightly. But I have obviously a very um, very bright lens right here. You can see the light that I've got here. And I want you to you know try different things. Watch as I move this around, okay? So I'm going to take this. This is like a wand, this uh, this particular light. And I'm going to take it from the in front, right? There's some effective lighting there. Uh, and then I'll bring it up over top so that it's almost like, uh, you know, the sun going through the sky. It's going up over top. And watch what's happening with the shadows. And then I will go around towards the back and and then all of a sudden the sun the front gets really dark but one of my absolute favorite uh lighting effects is backlighting but that's problematic so because it's problematic because all of a sudden you get uh this really dark dark shadow on the front so take something like like a piece of watercolor paper here and I've got a little piece of tape on here just so I can sort of prop it up and I'm going to can you see where I'm placing this in the upper left corner I'm placing this very close right I've got, kind of got it's got something on the other side but I'm taking this piece of paper here and I'm placing it just angled at it just off camera slightly <laughs> slightly off camera here and I'm taping it there and then I'll prop it up, you know, I'll just use a coffee cup or something here, prop that up so that that's going to act like a reflector. And this reflector will let the light from behind the teacup bounce back and illuminate, illuminate the front. You see how that's giving light in the front? I want you to also notice, look how dark and dark it's making the background. Right? When I change the light, if I change the light to the front, the background's very lit. But if I change it from backlighting, the background gets really dark. Now look look how effective that is when sorry, I'm not looking at what I'm doing here. Look how effective that is in highlighting the top of that teacup. Uh, you're not getting me? Oh, uh, I've been talking here for a minute. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> I don't know where you are, Margo, but here I am. <laughs> All right. So um, anyway, the lighting is uh, on the teacup is much lighter. It seems much lighter and brighter. And look at that little extra light just around, especially the handle. Do you see the handle has this extra light around it, contrasting the that dark background? That's very dramatic, you know, so it depends on the effect that you're looking for. Now this one, if I hold it up a little bit higher, so I'm bringing it up a little bit, a little bit more above, and I'm getting a little more light on the egg. And uh, that's quite, that's quite effective. Now I'm going to bring it a little to the left. And that's, look what that's doing to the shadows on the table. It's making these very long shadows. And it's giving me this really high contrast, uh, um, you know, full value range kind of thing. So that would be a much more dramatic um, situation than this sort of thing, right? If you if you just take a picture of a teacup, it might look something like that. Here, maybe you've got lights on both sides and that sort of thing. And that's, it, it's kind of boring, right? To see everything so well lit. <laughs> Uh, where's the shadows? How are you going to create the form 
you know, if you have very little in the way of shadows. Oh, you have no sound? Oh, hang on. Um, no, my sound is, my mic is working. Um, <laughs> you guys are confusing me today. So I'm here, I'm talking. Uh, my, uh, uh, my, my meter is going up and down as I talk, so it must be working. Anyway, <laughs> check your volume. Um, if somebody could type to her to uh, check, check her own computer volume. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> thought I was going crazy there for a minute. All right, that's good, okay. Uh, let me see. Um, I'm just checking back here, I'm looking at some of the, the comments. I mean, besides the sound, <laughs> just uh, want to say good morning to everybody from all over the place. Thank you so much for joining, as always. Um, you guys are, are awesome for showing up every week for me. Um, Oh, uh, the live started abruptly, uh, mid-sentence. Can I recap? I, I just basically said, uh, yeah, that my um, video setup is a little different today. I'm using uh, my, I, I took my usual cameras and I switched them all around. And um, basically that's all I said, uh, that I wanted to set this up differently. Okay, so let's get, let's get back to this lighting here. So... <clears throat> If I have the light right in front, it it flattens everything. Look at that egg. It look, just looks like a, a flat uh, oval shape, right? But if I bring it around, oh, look at that nice light on there now. And But the teacup doesn't have enough. So I, I'm optimizing. I'm trying to find the most drama uh, in my, the, the greater uh, value range. And this this little card here, this little piece of watercolor paper is bouncing back some of that light so that it fills in some of the shadows that might get too dark. I, I do want a good value range, but I don't want to lose all my detail in the shadows. So that's lighting things up. All right, so what if another consideration besides just the actual lights themselves is um, your background, uh, your your setting. So I might take something like a towel. Excuse me, I'm going to move around my table here to the back side. And I'm going to take just, just a towel. And I will drape that over top. And I could even move my... Um, this is, this is nothing but a regular you know, bath towel. And I can move my teacup and my egg. Hopefully I don't lose that egg. It's not hard boiled or anything, so it'll make a mess if I drop it. Um, okay, this one has a bit of a line across it, but, uh, but that's, that's gonna give you something different altogether. Now, if I were to take the light, oops, I'm hitting a wire there. Okay, so if I were to take the light and, see, I don't need it as bright now. See, I can adjust this light. I don't know if you can see this, but I can turn it off and put it on low. So now with so much dark in there, um, I, I can adjust this lighting, but look at, look at how bright that is. It's like crazy. The camera has uh, the ability to read darkness and compensate for it. So that's that's a problem. If I were taking this with my phone, however, all right, let's go back to my phone, because I don't have this uh, setting on my, <clears throat> I don't have this setting on my um, webcam, but I do have it on my phone. So let's, let's take this photo again, just a second, I'm gonna, not enough, not enough room for my hands here. So if I were to come down like this, let's, and take a picture, whoops, something like, trying not to zoom in too much, 
but um, if I were to take this picture like this, I could put my finger on one spot, lighten it, darken it, whatever I need to do here. I think, I think I'm going to increase my light a little bit and take that. Okay, so I probably don't want a, a, a bath towel in my painting, but I have something dark here. So <clears throat> I'm going to try one other scenario where I'm going to take my... Uh, towel and only have it for the background. So move this over. Don't roll egg. Stay put. There we go. Okay, and so let me just move this background like this. Okay, so now I have like a straight line across. So I've got um, sort of my table surface. Sorry, I'm sure I'm sure the sound is really weird as I'm walking around, but uh, you know, it's kind of the nature of the beast here. <clears throat> so now I have this really dark background. I still have this, um, this piece of paper here, this reflector thing going on. Uh, but one thing I want you to notice is the uh, the uh, single light that I'm using most of this time. All right, so I'm using a single light source. If you have um, like a window or something like that, um, people always ask me, do I work from photographs instead of from from uh, life? Well, yeah, because a lot of the paintings that I do are with natural sun. Now you know that natural light coming in a, a window, let's move this around a bit until I get something I like. I can move it further away. See so if I hold it really close, it's kind of blown out. But if I pull it away, I get a little bit more subtle light. But mo many of my paintings, I use natural light coming in the window. Well, you know that's not gonna stay that long. You know, it's going to change very, very, very quickly. So, um, so yeah, I absolutely, I work from photographs uh, when I'm doing my still lifes. So I'm bringing that around. Okay, so, you know, we can get, like I can intentionally, and what I'm looking at here is I'm looking at long shadows versus short shadows. If I bring this right over top, I've got it. Um, a different effect altogether. If I kind of go behind, I get a different effect. Uh, in front, you know, you can really see all the differences. And so many people I see bring in photographs to paint. And the lighting is just, like, it's a nice arrangement, perhaps, but the lighting is just so flat and uh, uninteresting. So I spend quite a bit of time actually working on the lighting also on the composition, so I'll talk about that in a second to keep the sprinkle salt on the table. Okay, that's a good idea. Um, nice tip, thank you, Linda. Linda says, sprinkle a little salt on the table and keep the egg from moving. Um, yeah, and uh, so I'm sorry, I'm knocking the camera around here, but uh, pull it away. The camera does a lot of compensating. Cameras are not really, or like phones are not really designed um, exclusively for uh, this purpose, that's for sure. But we can make use of its features. And um, let's try it from the other side. Now that egg's going to get a little bit too blown out. But uh, let's lower the lighting. That's, that's, that's off. <laughs> That's the low setting. Pull it a little further away. Get it a little closer. A little closer gives me a little more drama. But it's... It, you get something called lost edges. Can you see the outside of the egg? It's missing, right? It's too much light. Light against light. So 
If I want to show the egg, I'm going to bring it over here, get the light a little further away from it. But I also want lighting on the on the teacup. So I'm moving it around in all these different scenarios in order to try and um, create what I'm looking for. So I kind of like um, I kind of like the backlighting, but I'm just trying to make the most of uh, most of that. And there's going to be some lost edges. Lost edges are not a bad thing. You don't need to define every single thing. For example, um, this part of the teacup right here, you can see the line is uh, kind of missing. <laughs> you can't see where the teacup ends and the saucer starts. But if you feel like you need to see that, change your lighting some more. You know, you can change it really over to the side. Uh, really make the shadows long. Look how they go right off to the right hand side and that type of thing. Really give some some deep thought into your lighting that you're using in your in your paintings. It it can really make or break your painting to be honest. It's, it's such a, an important thing. Using cool light. Uh, this this is a uh, neutral a neutral light that I'm using but absolutely try a warm light. Try a uh, candle light. <laughs> See if candle light does anything for you. Try uh, sunlight. Sunlight's usually pretty warm. Depends on the time of day though. During the day it might be a cool light. Like in the middle of the day it might be a cool light. Late in the evening it's going to be a warm light. Um, oh yes. Yeah, I like that that idea. And Randy says, uh, crack the egg into the cup, leave the broken shell by the cup for an abstract still life. Well, it's not that abstract, but it's, it's a cool idea. Um, <clears throat> uh, paint, paint this. It will be gorgeous. Actually, I have a I have about a million painting a million photos of different uh, uh, teacups that I have. Um, so let's let's talk about thinking outside the box. All right. So let's let's take this this cup and try changing. This is this is the cup of the month kind of thing. But let's let's try changing this up. Maybe maybe that's a little different, right? Something something that you won't expect. Uh, try to have objects of different shapes, different heights. And one thing that I've just done right this moment is I've separated the two. They are connected a little bit by this shadow, but it's more interesting if they overlap. Then they feel more connected as one um, subject. So <clears throat> try that. Uh, I've, I have stacked teacups. I have, um, you know, sort of piled up just the cup part, uh, but you can fill it, you can fill your teacup with uh, tea and, and have the steam coming off of it. That's when you, having that dark, dark background would be really effective. And uh, yeah, start, you know, really start thinking about light, thinking about the background, thinking about the composition. Uh, don't just put a couple of things on the table, snap a picture and start painting. Put it, put a lot of thought into this part of it because it really does make a difference, like a, a tremendous amount of difference. Um, how to overcome the left brain censorship of putting odd items together in a still life. <laughs> like a carrot and a book and a rusted hinge. Uh, okay, so sometimes as an artist, you, you might do uh, a, a, you might do a still life with a theme. So in this case, the egg and the teacup really don't have too much in common. Uh, but if I had a little, uh, let's say I had a little pair of chicken uh, salt and peppers or something like that, you know, the China little salt and peppers, all of a sudden I've made a connection. You don't have to do it, but you certainly could. And if they're not related, Sometimes that's curious too. Some some people like that mystery of like, why did they put those things together? And they try to 
formulate why why those things sometimes it's is simply a study the shapes are interesting the textures are interesting the lighting's um, unique or things like that um, how do you get over that <sighs> well I guess I guess you just challenge yourself to uh, pick odd objects make something out of it and uh, See, see what you can see if you can maximize or optimize the uh, the effect there because um, you know they're, they're not things that normally go together you wouldn't normally put them together and, and then all of a sudden you have to put them together you know it's like uh, you know it's like any kind of social gathering you get people of all different kinds and sometimes you get subjects of all different kinds some are coarse some are smooth some are round some are square and uh, some, sometimes just those interesting shapes. So you're thinking more in terms of composition um, as opposed to making a theme. So you're just you know, placing odd things together uh, just to compose the shapes and the values correctly instead of just having a theme. Now, if you can do all, all of it together and um, have a theme, have a, um, a message. Uh, a message in your composition is a fantastic thing to do. Um, cowboy coffee. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, uh, let's see. The... Ooh, cowboys put raw egg in the cooking coffee pot because it makes it taste better, plus a pinch of salt. Ugh. <laughs> Sorry. Um, that sounds awful, but, uh, you know, I guess don't knock it till you try it, right? <laughs> I know people put butter in their coffee, uh, which is an odd, odd thing as well, but I guess it gives them a bit of protein. Um, yeah, they don't need to be related. Uh, yeah, I am just, I am just showing the, the lighting. Um, I really wasn't trying to make uh, like a fancy composition here or anything like that. But um, the one thing I don't like about this composition is round, 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 everything's round. Um, I would like to throw in something that is a little bit of a different shape in order to make this work, right? So I might, let me see if I can do this without knocking anything over, but let me see. I'm just trying to grab something here. Square, right? Square, something dark. Um, it, it it doesn't. If I place it just so, it will um, it'll give something different. It will help show the teacup even more, and it's a different shape. So that might uh, like it's not a great composition, but you know it's different. Now if I put the teacup like this, I wouldn't like that. And the reason that I wouldn't like that so much is because these two are the same height. That's they, It's almost like they're conflicting with each other. So I would want to make sure that I am um, making things a different height by turning it on its side, maybe even turning it this way. Okay? Now that gives a different shape. How about that? So that gives me a, a little bit of a different height. Not that different. Let me pull this over a little bit more. You know, let's see how we can how we can arrange this. I can even remove this, place oops, sorry, place this somehow, you know, if I, if I could arrange it like that, I might like that better. Right? I might have to use something to prop prop this up with. Oh, there goes my egg. <laughs> prop that up with. Um, and show the, the saucer in a different context than just the cup sitting on top. But, um, there we go. All right, the other, the other tool that a lot of people will use is to put, like you, you might see a book, a book, you know, if I put a book underneath this teacup, the teacup would definitely be taller. Um, and 
you know, so sometimes you elevate, change everything because everything's sitting on a flat surface here, but that doesn't have to stay that way. Uh, but try, try this. And another thing I want to talk about here is don't just, like everything right now that you're seeing is from one angle. What if I were to take this and photograph it? Let's see if I can tip this whole thing from above, right? What if I did that and changed that angle? You know, think outside the box. Sometimes it's interesting to take it from a different perspective as well. So if I were to, say, lower this, let's I don't know how much lower I can get here. I don't know if it'll go down much more there. And then angle that up. You know, it's a little bit lower perspective instead. So above or below. But, I mean, if you're looking at this shadow from this blue um, blue box, or I guess it's a tea light thing. If I look at that shadow, it is really interesting. But spend some time. How about the bottom of the cup? Maybe, you know, that's an unusual um, approach to things, isn't it? You know, gives different lighting. Now, if I change change around the lighting, let's move this let's move this further back. Let's try, you know, some different lighting on this. And I'll actually spend quite a long time um, arranging and trying different lighting and that sort of thing. And I'm looking not just at the objects. I'm looking at these shadows. Look how these shadows are changing as I move the light. Look, look how different they get. Um, I also really recommend, especially if you're kind of new to watercolor, um, or you know, you're you maybe just sort of an early watercolorist, then I would suggest. Uh, you know, keeping the lighting simple. Use one light. Don't you ha don't have two light sources. Uh, look, look what happens if I bring this other light up. I have two of these kind of wands. But if I bring two lights up, you're going to get um, sort of double shadows uh, there. Can you see that there's double shadows there? It also fills in an awful lot of those um, shapes like the shadows on the shapes themselves. But look at, I've got double shadows because I've got two light sources. So it's it's much simpler to keep it to one light source and just use something like this uh, watercolor card or this piece of watercolor here to bounce back a little bit of the light, just to you know, reflect it back instead of using another light. Um, let me see, let's try a little bit from behind. I'm gonna lower the intensity of this light a little bit and we'll try moving this around what about moving this box on its side let's let's do that kind of thing let's have it facing inward right everything does not have to be um sitting up the way it, you would put it in your china cabinet <laughs> kind of thing uh, Moving the light around, just I think I could use probably a little more light in this room. That I think my camera is struggling a little bit with the lack of light, but um, but it's it's kind of interesting to get some of these these shadows. Now that's that is the one thing that you might run into a little bit with your camera is the um, the low light. You might have a little bit more graininess to your uh, picture because of the low light and the fact that you're zooming in as opposed to taking it up close. So when you zoom in, you know, you're zooming in digitally basically. And um, let's put this behind. See, I, I kind of like it better with the, with the white. I've got that cloth behind, but I don't like that as much as having the white. So I'm going to change that back. Let's Sorry, moving the lighting around here. So I'm going to change this back to the whiteboard that I had behind. Um, you could use a, if you had a black towel, I didn't have a black cloth or anything, but um, I just had a brown one. But if you had a black cloth, um, that would absorb a little more light 
and you wouldn't see quite as much of the um, you know the brownness of that so I mean brown doesn't really look but I, I personally like the white a little brighter uh, like that I, I, I feel like I can on a white subject I can see the shadows more but if I bring it depending on where I bring the light I can make things really dramatic look how dramatic that is right you can see in the upper left how I'm holding this light I want a little bit on that on that uh, the uh, violets that are on the uh, cup and I could even maybe stand this up now that I've nope that doesn't work because now they're the same height I thought if I turned it this way it would make a difference but it, it really doesn't so it's it's actually better if I do that kind of thing so sometimes I'll even take like a video I'll take a video of you know me moving this light around and then I'll just use a freeze frame um, to uh, take the the reference but I like the long shadows here like I love those long shadows that's to me I love that it's that sort of drama and if I put it a little further back let me put it back here so it bounces off the card a little bit more um, it fills in those shadows a little bit better so I kind of like that uh, I might like this sitting up a little bit better there we go it really catches the light on the rim so much nicer let's move this back so they connect they're much better right I like it anyway so you, you just have to keep moving around and, and trying things and trying things but I want you to be aware of these things before you um, um, before you do this yeah the 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 uh, translucency of the cup and the egg uh, is is amazing right now and if I did crack open this egg and uh, and it was just the shell that translucency would really be showing through so that would be really helpful um, okay let me just a small egg cup yeah that would certainly connect things and it, this would look like breakfast wouldn't it uh, that would definitely uh, tie into the theme not you know sometimes you can try and find a connection um, sometimes it might even have a um, a hidden meaning like a meaning to you alone maybe it's uh, maybe they're treasures that your grandmother had you know like this happens to be my late aunt's um, teacup kind of thing and I don't necessarily think of eggs when I think of her <laughs> or anything like that um, but I may I may have to include a few different things just to make the composition a little bit better um, let me just I'm reading through just to see if I've got any questions I guess you know I sh somebody suggested to me that if you have a question put it in capitals and then it's easier for me to spot so I thought that was a pretty good idea um, but uh, yeah I, I think the the shadow from this blue um, this blue box this little teacup holder thing I love the the shadow of that I, I, I mean that's one of the reasons I love painting glass I absolutely love the shadows probably as much or more than the uh, than the glass itself um, odd numbers of items yes odd numbers of items are very um, very pleasing to the eye right because then you don't get this this seesaw thing happening with your eyes you know where you're bouncing back and forth from from one grouping to another or single item to another item like for example if you had a pair of um, salt and pepper shakers and you wanted to make a composition out of just those that well it's two so what do you do in that case sometimes you can get away with two if you do what like what I did with the cup here lay one down lay one down uh, you know simple as that try it at it could just you'd make them look different um, overlapping the objects um, you know you you wouldn't want to take all of these things and have them with gaps between them right oops sorry my giant hand there it looks 
<laughs> looks like a gigantic hand. But, you know, if, if we didn't have any of these objects touching, they really have no relationship to each other. So overlapping objects is very important. So you might take one of those uh, salt and pepper shakers, uh, like maybe the salt shaker, and lay it down. Even maybe put a couple of granules of salt on the table to, to make it look like, oops, you know, something happened. But um, overlapping, see the egg is now overlapping the teacup. The, the blue the blue cup or the blue uh, what you might call it tea tea light thing is now um, extending that shadow and sometimes if I make the shadow really long it can really pull I can I can do some interesting stuff with these shadows on the right hand side uh, I might want to and I, I don't have to necessarily I can I can use this reflector sorry I can use this reflector um, you know, in other places, like as I move this around, you can see it reflecting uh, on the on the teacup. Look on the big, the bigger image here. But you can see as I move this around, it it illuminates different areas. So, if I want the egg egg more illuminated, I bring it down here. Look at how it can bring a little more light on that egg. See if I put it there versus having it not there. What a difference that makes, right? Fills in those shadows. So, whoops. All right. So let's. Uh, I think. Uh, I think I've covered. If, do you have any que If you have any questions about setting up your still life, some people will use a box. Um, and, and it's I guess so that they can tr control the light that is. Um, affecting other areas. The inside of the box, depending on how you uh, set it up, you know, you might set it up with um, white panels on, on the left and right side. Uh, or you might, some people even might use something like, um, like foil or something to reflect even more. But to me, I think that's a little too extreme. Uh, white is a, is a very good reflector. You know, as you can see, I can really fill in the light there if I want to. Uh, you know, makes a difference, right? Just moving that in or out of the, out of the area, to uh, to light up things that I want to. I don't want to lose the too much detail in. And uh, yeah, so you don't need anything fancy. You don't need to have a fancy camera. You don't need to have, you know, umbrella lights and uh, and all of that sort of th thing. You don't have to. You don't have to build a box. I'm, this is just sitting on my on my table here, uh, but I can do I could set up something quite uh, quite effective um, just with what I have here. If you can get enough light in your in your shadows, you know if there's enough light here for you to be able to paint that. Fine. Um, for me, I'd like to see a little bit more in there. I'd like to infuse a little bit more light into into an area such as this right here. So I might use this card, you know, to to do that. You know, you might even enlist a, a helper, you know, if it's, you know, it's hard for you to take the picture with your, with one hand and, and put a card or hold something, a reflector somewhere else, you know, en enlist a helper for that type of thing. Uh, are your objects with an L-shaped white cardboard missed the beginning uh, are your objects with an L-shaped white cardboard um, I'm not sure I understand I just used a piece of watercolor paper there and um, or anything white basically if I were to take uh, something that was uh, say bright Bright pink. Let's, uh, okay, so I've got this um, piece of orange, and I can reflect. And look at look how that's changing the light. I'm bringing this this orange into there, and that is changing that lighting on those. Look at look at the orange reflecting in those shadows. How interesting! Nice compliment to the blue as well. So even a reflector such as this can be really interesting, right? This is just, I don't know, I don't even know what this is. It's a receipt. So this is a, uh, a piece of uh, just orange card or paper. 
right? And I, I lay that there and, and I want you to look in particular at, at the shadow under the egg, the shadow under the teacup and watch what happens when I add that. Look at that light reflecting in there. You know, very often I will say to people, you know, make sure you don't make your shadows boring, that you, um, you know, you put some color into your shadows. Well, if you don't sort of automatically see that, think about it when you're setting it up. Look for it, you know, you're hunting for it, but you can actually incorporate some of that as well. So, so that reflected light, and, and I just have this other light way over here on the, on the left side here, and it's uh, filling in this, uh, this still life pretty well. And just with or without that light, very interesting. They could really make that that quite an interesting... I, I think I even like that better. I've got to do that. <laughs> so having a couple of different uh, pieces of, uh, you know, just something reflective like this where you could um, bounce back some color into something, try it. It, it can make a, a big difference. You know, I have, uh, you know, I have another... another uh, envelope here, and it's more of a yellow. And... It's bringing more of a yellow highlight in there. Uh, it's amazing. Color really bounces around, especially in shadows. Right. So if I were to bounce that in there, right. Look at the difference with and without. Um, simple everyday objects that you have around your house. It's amazing how much you can do. You just need the the know-how. And um, then when you go to paint that, you're not going to paint a gray shadow. It's, I mean, if I did it like this, it might be a gray shadow. But if I started coming in with, uh, you know, something something bright like that, my shadows, I'm going to see. I, I mean, it's pretty obvious to see that that uh, that light glowing in there. So if you don't automatically see it, it's uh, it's great. Um, you know, you can you can actually help yourself see it with with something like this. So I'm just reading back here. Sometimes wonder. Oh yeah, Goodwill stores, yeah, <laughs> and antique stores. Oh my goodness, you can get you can um, get overwhelmed with uh, uh, subject matter to paint. It's better to borrow something from a friend because then then you're not. Um, you know, you get to use it and then you can give it back and you don't have to worry about storing it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, um, so if I were to do this in a box, uh, see, I, I like being able to have it just open like this so that I can just take something and hold it up and, and place it where I, wherever I want to and I'm not restricted with a, just a box that I'm painting in. Um, an, an open window can make a tremendous amount of difference too. Like the lighting uh, from natural sun is is so dramatic and really does give some strong shadows. But the problem with this, those strong shadows is is they and this is part of the, what happens with your cameras always makes those shadows way too dark, right? So just reflect it in there and. Um, and see what you can do. Play around. Uh, have have as much fun as you want, but spend a lot of time thinking about your composition instead of um, uh, instead of just doing that. Uh, did the pink flower turn to violet? Yeah, it's it's interesting, isn't it? It is actually a purple flower, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the the that that difference right there. With that card in there. Amazing. All right. I guess we're going to wrap this one up. Um, yeah. The, good point, Linda. Linda says, uh, if you borrow from a friend, um, then the friend may want the painting when you're done with it. Good thought. Good thought. Um, yes. And uh, orange and blue, nice complementary colors. Beautiful. So... Uh, Anyway, that's uh, that's what I would recommend when you're sitting up, setting up your still life. Consider light, consider background. Um, 
if I were to uh, if I were to take that same orange, I like this orange, love that. Now, what would happen if I got a really dark background and had that orange? Oh my goodness, it looks like it's it's all, that looks almost like candlelight. But look at look at the orange glowing in there. But I'm darkening the background and there's a little bit more reflection. Quite quite dramatic. Let's bring this up somewhere here. How about there? You know, change it around, try it out, and uh, just have a little bit of fun. You'll know what you like when you see it. <laughs> there's no there's no formula for it, but you'll know what you like when you see it. But some things to consider is is the background, uh, single source lighting, uh, reflectors, use of reflectors of different colors or white. Uh, to bring light into your shadows and keeping your objects in different um, uh, different shapes and different heights and sizes and things like that. So you want to have that. Would I consider posting my my line drawings instead of your live sessions so that we can be ready to paint along? Um, I'm, well, I'm not making a line drawing of everything necessarily when I when I'm uh, doing my live demos. Uh, but I, my, if you follow me on Facebook, I always post the, um, you know, the, the poster, or the, the thumbnail for the, for the uh, course. I could put the reference picture there. Um, I'll leave it up to you to do the drawing or tracing or whatever you want to do. Uh, but I can, I can certainly do that. Um, yes, even the, the photo. Yes, I, I could do the photo. I don't always, um, necessarily do the line drawing beforehand. Sometimes I do the drawing right during my demo, so that's not always possible for me to do that. Uh, that would be a little extra work for me too, so um, yeah. All right, so go find some find some interesting uh, uh, objects around your house. Try some lighting. Uh, if you've got a little sort of handheld light, that's that's even more helpful, but sometimes you need couple of hands because you you've got you're holding a light you're holding a, a reflector and you can't hold your phone at the same time <laughs> so uh, you might have to enlist a friend or at least prop things up uh, you know I might use just a coffee cup or something to prop up uh, my reflector or something like that you can you can find different ways of doing that but uh, anyway give it some thought give it give it some play time and uh, we'll see you next week thanks so much for joining bye